what at this point strategically necessary and what today in these circumstances when everybody discussed the Minsk and the ceasefire which could be very temporary could be done. I think the ceasefire having been uh, the very basis of this uh, supposedly new security architecture that some people talk about, it is absolutely a sine qua non. It is a precondition to anything else. Uh, the uh, shelling and, uh, and the import of uh, heavy armaments across the Ukrainian border must be stopped. I think there must be international uh, supervision and uh, patrolling of the border between Russia and between Ukraine. Uh, it is elementary uh, and uh, somehow it has to be assured. The United Nations, unfortunately, because of the Russian veto, is completely paralyzed and unable to do it. Uh, I still have some hopes of the OSCE, although there again uh, it's very difficult to get uh, a unanimous decision. I think the European Union, at least, has a better chance uh, of uh, taking some steps, uh, but it's, of course, reluctant to interfere uh, in what has become a conflict between two countries. The idea that this is an internal problem of, uh, of Ukraine is, is ludicrous, although it is being, of course, uh, broadcast and, and repeated, and many in the West are, would like to believe that it's a Ukrainian problem and Europe has nothing to worry about except the refugees flooding in. Europe has a lot of things to worry about, including, I think, the security of its borders because the borders of Ukraine have been uh, breached, its territory uh, has been invaded and Europe since the Second World War should remember that this is the most serious thing. Uh, if we think back on the events of 1938, 1938-1939, we should not allow this to happen uh, just by looking on and, and sitting back and saying, well, that's not our problem. And if technically you said that it's very important to have the ho to hope for peace, but also to be prepared, and what does it mean for NATO, for the military, for the governments? Uh, we heard from several generals that uh, there is a, a room for improvement. Uh, countries have to invest more in their defense. There has been a movement, a pacifist movement uh, in Europe saying, oh, the world is such a wonderful, uh, peaceful place now, we don't need defense. And we see clearly every day around us that it is not a peaceful place and not likely to be in the near future. We have to be able to defend ourselves. And that means investing uh, in defense. It means also preparing for new forms of warfare where information and disinformation and propaganda play an extremely important role, destabilization uh, as well as uh, military invasion and military attack play an important role and we have to think about those uh, and uh, for instance the freedom of the press which gets abused uh, by uh, countries that absolutely have control of their media uh, from the central government in a way that uh, does not allow freedom of the press. There is now a lot of talk that Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, was traveled to the United Nations and would give their address and there is a whole talk about Russia role in fighting ISIS and that could be kind of the another place that Russia would play the role of the somebody who wants to save the world from ISIS and you know being really calm at this point that, uh, that, that probably because of that the government, uh, the, the European governments can lift the sanctions. What would you say on that? Is there this idea? Is this this trust? Uh, I think that word trust has been misused to such an extent that we should practically strike it from our vocabulary. There is not trust uh, when you get stabbed uh, in your back. It's as simple as that. And to talk about re-establishing trust with somebody who's cutting heads uh, or, or sending rockets uh, at your cities and so on is ludicrous. Uh, that uh, President Putin will not try to play uh, Father Christmas um, uh, and offer his services uh, um, I am sure that he will do something of the kind. I would like the world to remember that if they want to bargain and get the help and collaboration of Russia, which everybody reminds us, then please do not do it at the expense of others, be they the Ukrainians or anybody else. Let them do at their own expense if they wish to make concessions to Russia, but not at the expense of other countries who happen to have the misfortune of having been borders with Russia.
Last, uh, Miss President, I've been a lot this year in Riga and talking a lot to the Latvian journalists, answering the questions about Ukraine, in particular, um, talking a lot to the Russian speakers in, in, in Latvia. So there is this feeling that a lot of Russian speakers really believe in what the Kremlin says, and even being living in uh, in in Riga would speak all about the troubles in the European Union, and uh, would have, be, let's say, uh, the point of view of Putin understanders. Um, what can be mistake? What, what can be things done by the Latvian state? And what do you think also? Uh, how you can avoid? Because there is some kind of sentiment in the people uh, of the Russian speakers in Latvia, yeah. Uh, and uh, probably what what have been done by by you by by Latvian government? And what you think could be improved in order to engage uh, the the, pe the Russian speakers in Latvia? We have done a great deal to engage uh, the Russian-speaking population of Latvia, but I am told that Russia presents very good television programs, uh, good comedy, uh, good uh, detective uh, series, um, uh, soap operas, uh, very exciting, and then uh, a dish of propaganda from morning to night, which is very effective. We have freedom of the press. And this is one of the challenges of Europe, not just my country, but all of Europe. If we have open, free uh, press uh, and somebody comes in uh, with deliberate misinformation and propaganda, how, do you try, uh, how can you counter it? This is one of the challenges I think that Europe will have to solve within the next, next year or two. But I still would ask, as a as a statesman, uh, what also there would be things from your experience that probably you could have uh, made differently. Um, talking now about the Ukrainian government, also have to engage the population with the, you know already different ideas. Doesn't matter if they were artificially created and if the you know the people had been uh, had bought some of the the Kremlin propaganda. But um, you see that the division had happened both in Latvia and as well in Ukraine. What you would uh, what would be your advice? also for the politician maybe to avoid some mistakes which could be could have happened uh, any uh, society uh, that is pluralistic and democratic will accept that people have different opinions just as they have different DNA uh, and different genetics uh, this is not a tragedy it is something that we accept as a fact of life uh, the only thing that is needed uh, from a citizen living in a particular geographic um, country within its borders is to be loyal to that country if they can be loyal to that country they belong to that country if they are disloyal to that country they should move uh, to wherever their heart lies and thank God we don't have an iron curtain anymore anybody feels unhappy in Europe well they're free to move so many people seem to be wanting to move into Europe but of course anybody who's unhappy in Europe can always move out